please, for you and your family, please go check out this video that Good Luck America has put on. And then go to the other video that he would like for you to watch because it is very important. John Miller and Donald Trump are one and the same. Yes, it's my opinion that it is Donald Trump's voice. Now it's suggesting that you, you misled us. Yeah, that I'm lying. I'm not lying. His denial was, you know, it was, that doesn't sound like me. It's, a, it's interesting because if somebody called me up and said, did you call and pretend to be your own PR person? I would say, no, I never did. I, would, I have never done something like that ever. I wouldn't say right. that doesn't sound like me. Right. So you, you, you don't believe him. Were you surprised to see him misleading? No, I'm not surprised to see him misleading. Of course not. I mean, I would probably be a little shocked that, you know, this came into my life. But, the, Megan, the main thing here is that I didn't leak the tape. And there what? were two people on the conversation. Wait, you, t you taped it because you're a reporter doing yeah, it? Yeah, and I lost the tape. Were you the only one with a copy of the tape? Yes. When did you lose it? Back 25 years ago. Did somebody have stolen it? No. I was in my house, and then I moved apartments. So who else would have had a copy of the tape? Donald Trump. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're suggesting, you're suggesting Trump leaked this to the yes. Washington Post? Yes. Why? He got me. He's done stranger <laughs> things. Because he loves publicity? Yeah. So you're suggesting that he may want us talking about this right now because it generates a news cycle, perhaps? Hello, Donald. <laughs> These names would be exposed during his 2016 presidential campaign run. However, there was another pseudonym Trump used that isn't well known. John Titter. Titter, in particular, is of special interest to this conspiracy. Oliver, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Oliver, just give us an overview of uh, who John Titter was. Sure. Um, John Teeter. Actually, um, I just took a look at the calendar, and it was it's going to be exactly 10 years ago, November 2nd, that somebody claiming to be a time traveler from the year 2036 um, went on a series of Internet forums uh, claiming to be a time traveler, and they offered to answer questions. They talked about the future, about technology, um, you know, how time travel worked. And for a period of three months, this person answered questions, and then they announced that they were going to leave. And this is March of 2000, uh, March of 2001. This person announced that they were leaving, and they were never heard from again. And I think the reason why we're here talking about it ten years later is because a lot of what this person said, people feel has come to pass. Um, talking about the physics and the technology and the politics. You know, we're here and I'm here because some of the things that this person said sure made it sound like they really were who they said they were, a time traveler. Making claims as early as November of 2000 to be a time traveler from the year 2036. Taylor spoke of events that happened in his native timeline onto an obscure internet discussion board posting several warnings for personal reasons. Answering questions directed toward him he even posted several pictures showing the instruction manual and the time device manufactured by General Electric in the back of his 1967 Chevrolet. There are rumors he even faxed messages to various radio hosts like Art Bell of Coast to Coast AM, warning of the impending future. He spoke of terrible events that would occur from early 2000 through 2012 leading to war. He did not name Islamic terrorism, but mentioned that a skyscraper would vanish in New York. Not speaking specifically, because the timeline was often in flux. 
But one of the predictions that this person made in the facts, he said that in New York, there's a skyscraper missing. He says, where, where I'm from in my time, there's a skyscraper that's missing. This is 1998, so 9-11 had not happened here. So a lot of people point to that as John trying to you know, signal that, hey, I'm, I am who I say I am, and you're not going to realize it until the year 2001. BuzzFeed dug up an old quote from Donald Trump talking about a large-scale terror attack 19 months before 9-11. In his 2000 book, The America We Deserve, Trump wrote, I really am convinced we're in danger of the sort of terrorist attacks that will make the bombing of the 1993 Trade Center look like little kids playing with firecrackers. Trump also mentioned the mastermind of the attack, writing, quote, One day, we're told that a shadowy figure with no fixed address named Osama bin Laden is public enemy number one, and U.S. jet fighters lay waste to his camp in Afghanistan. He escapes back under some rock, and a few news cycles later, it's on to a new enemy and a new crisis. Trump. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold yeah. on a second. Mm -hmm. Is this really Trump before 9-11? Have you read this? It's 2000 in his book. Are we making that? Somebody, did you Nick. make this up, Mika? Nick. I don't know if that guy was a time traveler or not, but everything he said about that machine is true. And maybe only 20 people knew about it because it was a marketing issue at the time that they didn't want people to know that the, the machine was that versatile because then it would have diminished their business. So they kept that under wraps. So at the time, there was only about 20 people that knew that this machine could do it. And, you know, apparently John Teeter was one of them, or he really was a time traveler. Just wait, though. There's more. Oh, so my. We're gonna, we're, <laughs> there's oh more. My. So Tesla had a loaf for pigeons and doves, right? He had them. They come to his tower. He had this one pigeon that was his favorite. It was a white dove. And on this, well, this white dove uh, came to him when he died, Tesla said. And the dove's eyes shone brighter than any lamp that he had created, he said, when it died. And it, and it passed when it died. And that was reminiscent to me of uh, Donald the Dove, that which was a nickname that John Trump had given Donald. But there's also a magazine where you can see Donald Trump holding this white dove. And at that time, he was talking about how if he was president, he could negotiate peace with Israel and, um, pa or not Pakistan, but um, Iran, I Iran, I all of the Middle East. So he, he talks about that, and that was his kind of thing. And so he's always kind of, there's predicting program of him coming to negotiate this peace deal. And, of course, you remember the, the coin in Israel and uh, kind of the battle cry of Donald Trump. So it's, it's all really kind of mind-blowing. Does anything come to your mind, David? Well, there's a big one here. And, of course, we know the biblical symbolism of the dove representing the Holy Spirit. We see in this picture Donald Trump holding the dove, and absolutely the Luciferians believe that this real force was the Holy Spirit, yeah. the universal magnetism of yeah. the snake swallowing its tail. Yeah, the and dove is always like classified as a spirit yeah. you know, throughout all mythologies. Yeah. I mean, and, and Hitler believed if he could control the vril, he could control the world. It's so that that concludes that part of that video right there. So there's 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 so much more, and there's more in that video for those of you that want to go back and watch that. It is still on YouTube. Um, I think we did it in 2022. But man, I'll, I'll tell there's there's more we're going to cover here. So just hold on to your horses. It's going to be a little little bit longer. I promise I won't let you go on too long tonight. But I think it's worth your time, hopefully. So, but David, what do you, going back to that, what do you have to say to that stuff? I was here the first time when we did it, and it's still just stunning, yeah. isn't it? I mean, just to begin to think about these things and uh, all of these connections that just can't be coincident, it is truly stunning to me. It is truly stunning. So we're going to go on to this next clip. Uh, this covers more of the subject we're going to be talking about, and I think it's definitely a must to be able to fully kind of cover who is Trump here. So here we go, guys. We're going to go ahead and, and start this video. And, David, if there's any point you want me to pause this video and say, hey, pause, I want to say something, please do, uh, yes, because sir. Robert Sapar is not a believer. He is a anthropologist, a human anthropologist, um, and he has a lot of stuff that really uh, lines up with the stuff that we've been studying. It really makes sense from a broad range perspective of the world. So here we go. 
I'd like to point out some interesting facts about President Trump, whose paternal ancestry is traceable to Bohemian Amberg, a village in southwestern Germany in the 18th century. Its residents are known as Palatines. Their historic coat of arm is the Palatine Lion, with its tongue extended, a red crown, symbols of their ruling families as seals, and also on the Bavarian coat of arms. Bavaria's origins date back to Celts and Subian groups. The Celts identify as one of the lost tribes that entered Europe, and the Subians should sound familiar to my readers as in Swabia, or Neuschwabenland, the area of Antarctica annexed by the nationalist Germans and central to Operation High Jump. The yeah. classified post-World War II military invasion of Antarctica by Allied forces. And David, I know that we've done a show on this and we've talked about this quite a bit. What is your idea on why did the Germans go and start a place in Antarctica and call it New Schwabieland? Well, they began going there. Uh, well, there were German expeditions to Antarctica even in the 1800s, and they started doing serious uh, trips to Antarctica in the 30s. And I think as far as the Nazis were, it was almost a backup plan. You know, it was like plan B. If we get destroyed, uh, we'll go here to survive. And a lot of it was just a lot of basic uh, the tactical advantage of having something there uh, at Antarctica. And we've got it all here. We've got Bavaria. We have the Bavarian Illuminati. And the reason why the Illuminati was birthed in this area of Bavaria, because it was a Jesuit stronghold. Adam Weishaupt was a professor at Ingolstadt University. He was a Jesuit professor before he was a luminist and before he was a Freemason. So we have all we have in the bloodline and the geography and uh, all, the whole thing. We have every ingredient we need for a massive uh, conspiratorial plot here. And I believe the story goes, too, that the Germans also believed there was a race of blonde-haired, blue-eyed giants that yeah. actually lived in these areas and they wanted to intermingle with their blood and so that they could go back to their Aryan heritage. Yeah, that uh, there in Antarctica, he was in search of this inner earth race that he could inbreed uh, the German people with. Hans Trump, born in Bovenheim in 1789, moved to the nearby village of Kalstadt, where his grandson, Frederick Trump, the grandfather of Donald Trump, was born in 1869. This German heritage was long concealed by Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, after World War II and until the 1980s. He told people he was of Swedish ancestry. Donald Trump repeated this version in The Art of the Deal, published in 1987, but later said he was proud of his German heritage. You know, I'm proud to have that German blood. There's no question about it. Great stuff. Of course, Sweden was founded by the same group of people that we call Swabians, and very few people understand what that means. That said, one needs only look at the occult, meaning hidden, symbology of the Trump Tower to gain a deeper insight into his true ancestry. Completed in 1983, it has an official height of 664 feet, but if you count its spire, however, it raises its height to 666 feet. While 666 is called the number of the beast in most manuscripts of Revelation, a fragment of the earliest papyrus gives a number of 616 as the original number of the beast. In a Kabbalistic context, 666 is a positive holy number associated with light, or the sun, and the heart chakra. 666 is also the number of the goddess such as Ishtar, Isis, Aphrodite, and is sacred in Egyptian mythology. It's related to sex, fertility, and motherhood. That said, Trump Tower also features an inverted triangle made up of trees or bushes. An upside-down triangle is also a symbol of the goddess. In alchemy, it means water, or the divine feminine energy. And if you look closely, you'll see that the trees are arranged in three rows of six, 
making up the three sides of the triangle. I'd like to also point out that the tree itself is a sacred sex symbol, from the tree in the Garden of Eden, to the fig or Bodhi tree associated with Buddha and enlightenment, which is really a reference to Tantra. Above this inverted triangle of trees, we see seven pillars rising. If you count the points at the top of the building, you'll notice there are seven, which in Tantra are the number of chakras in the human body. In astral theology, there are seven gods, meaning the five visible planets with the naked eye, plus the sun and the moon. In Islam, or Sufi cosmology, there are seven heavens and hells. And, of course, in the biblical context, it's the seven days of creation. In a more esoteric perspective, seven has to do with sacred geometry. As Pythagoras tells us, the number seven is, quote, the essence or first principle of things. The famous G in the square and compass symbol is publicly regarded as standing for God or the generative principle, but in esoteric context, it stands for the seventh letter of the alphabet which alludes to the ancient esoteric tantric practices. A self-proclaimed Christian, he's also an initiate that, like the Freemasons and Rosicrucians, subscribe to a lineage based on the heritage of the Knights Templar, who claim descent from high temple priests of Jerusalem, whose ancestors fled into Europe after the destruction of the temple and introduced Kabbalah into European secret societies which for a time was regarded as alchemy. This ancient Aryan bloodline goes back to the Magi of Mesopotamia and priests of ancient Egypt, who according to German textbooks up until 1945 were regarded as the true origins of the Nordic people. During the Holocene, as indicated by the yellow circles on this map, who eventually migrated north into Europe and Scandinavia. This should also help to explain why Trump uses the lion symbol. As I've already explained about his ancestry, Germanic bloodline, and occult significance he incorporates into his architecture, as well as his personal allegiance to an ancient Kabbalistic network that is misunderstood by many and completely unknown to most. Whenever you look and you begin to consider a conspiratorial scenario or to probe the possible eventual truth of a situation, you have to ask yourself, is it possible? And it's striking to me, I think it was maybe Mr. Trump's great-great-grandfather was born in 1789 in this area of Germany. This was 13 years after the Illuminati was formed in this very area. 13 years after the Illuminati was formed in this very area. And we had there uh, the, the Rothschilds, and we see deep, you've already shown here the deep ties we have uh, with the Trump family and the Jewish people. We had Jacob Frank there. We had Adam Weissoff there. And this was all there in this Jesuit area, and there's tremendous ties with the Trump family and Catholicism. And was I think was it his great grandfather? He grew up. He was thirteen year er, thirteen years after these people came together in this area to form that. This is the atmosphere and the area that the Trump family grew up in. So it's very <coughs> likely. And as you look at Mr. Trump, he, all of these original elements of the Illuminati, his family has ties to them. And it could be because they were established in this bloodline long ago in Germany, way back in the 18th century. Uh, there's things about Trump that really do make me wish that sometimes he was sincere with some of the stuff he said, and maybe he is. I don't know. I think he's super smart. I think that he um, has the ability to move people in a way that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. So that's that video. Um, interesting stuff to say the least i mean when you really just consider this bloodline everything there's also a video i saw and a book that these people were showing out of his genealogy and he also goes back to a king of jerusalem and what i find interesting about all of this if you really think about it even if his bloodline is impeccable towards that lineage if you look at like the kings of babylon uh, nobody would have had a better lineage than nebuchadnezzar to an elite lineage and yet God called him his servant and used him 
in these situations. So just having that bloodline doesn't necessarily mean that God can't use that person or doesn't use those people in that bloodline because as as much as they may think that they have a bloodline going to the Nephilim or whatever, we don't know what that what that what their future or their past really looks like. It's interesting though to say the least. What do you think about that, David? I mean, this is years later we're looking at this. But. Yeah, and uh, just quite honestly, when you look at all these intricate symbolisms that is so blatant of the 666 and the goddess, and we're not even, I know a lot of you, most of you have seen all the things in Donald Trump's apartment. I just, it just doesn't pass the smell test with me to think, that he's just naive to all of that. You know, he, he's too smart a guy. And having said that, too, you know, I think of the Stuart dynasty that was there in England. The Stuarts were just about as nasty as nasty you can be. They were hardcore Roman Catholics in allegiance to the Pope. And God reached down and he plucked out James I and uh, turned him... Uh, to the Protestant faith and not the Catholic and why we have our King James Bible. Now, you know, and also there's there's the layers around Mr. Trump, the heavy Kabbalistic and Zionist connection, and also the Jesuit connection. As I mentioned in that video, Adam Weishoff was a Jesuit before he was a Luminist and a Freemason. And we just saw Mr. Trump recently there at the Al Smith dinner, you know, and that is a Catholic function. And it's re was just really surprising to me that how many Jewish billionaires show up at this Catholic function. We have Michael Bloomberg and a lot of other very rich uh, elite New York Jews. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's quite the mix. So, um, I, but still, you know, I just get that whiff in my nose that, you know, this just ain't right here. Well, if it wasn't right before, maybe this will help it a little bit or maybe make it worse. I don't know. We're going to watch this video. This is uh, from the same video, but it talks about his ties to Israel and how profound they are. So we're going to watch this. We have the Trump coin, the Temple coin that they use for the 70 years to fulfill 70 years that they have been uh, a nation once again 70 year anniversary they chose Trump and they showed a picture of him by King Cyrus what can we say about King Cyrus David well Cyrus was a Persian king that gave the decree that enabled uh, Nehemiah and Ezra to restore the temple worship there uh, in the second temple and many people looked to Mr. Trump as this type of really larger-than-life figure. And certainly in Israel, he is more popular in Israel than he is in America. It is Trump height that they've allowed him to build on and kind of created a city blocks and everything else surrounding the man. Um, also, he moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, declaring Israel the true state, declaring Jerusalem the capital of Israel. And he was awarded the Keter Yerushalayim Crown of Jerusalem Award on July 10th, 2023 by the Israel Heritage Foundation. They crowned Trump. They crowned Trump as the King of Israel. That's what they were saying. <laughs> yeah, interesting stuff, man. To say to say the least, the, this this gets it just keeps getting thicker and thicker. And it, you're right, David. He has to know who he is. But, like we said before, that doesn't mean God can't use him, but he does have to know who he is. I mean, you see it in his apartment complex. For those of you that haven't seen the full show we did on Trump not too long ago, we showed inside of his apartment how he had the pictures of Apollo and he, how he had all of these different statues and everything kind of pointing to that. So um, I'm praying that this assassination attempt caused him to have a change in faith because... All of this stuff points to him knowing exactly yeah. what he is. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we don't know, he, he knows. The Bible tells us to pray for our leaders, and I have been praying for Mr. Trump, and I will continue to do so. I certainly will. I would love <laughs> for Mr. Trump to do well, and uh, 
I would love for our nation to have a real, genuine turn back to God. Of course we would. But I, in all honesty, I have to say I'm still at the what's that smell stage. That's where I'm at. Yeah, we'll we'll see the smell very soon. Well, yeah, we'll maybe. We'll, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll see the smell very soon. We'll see here. We'll but, see. So you talked a little bit about this earlier, but part of this collection is the book 1900 or the Last President. Yeah, and it talks about. Um, as we talked, as you were telling us before, David, it talks about how this outsider gets elected, and in the fifth, in Fifth Avenue, where this Trump place, the Trump Tower stands, there's this big riot that takes place in that area, and just unrest starts happening and all of this stuff. So yeah, and I might mention in the uh, Ingersoll Lockwood books, the riots start at Madison Square. Where, you know, Mr. Trump just recently did the quite historic rally at Madison Square Garden. You know, I mean, how, how does how does that happen? You know, I, I, I don't know. This is going on right now. This is right speak. now. This is going on as we speak right now. In New York, uh, we've seen stuff going on in Chicago right now as well. So, yeah, it's... But this is the kind of stuff that, we, that I think we're going to expect to see in the future. I, you know, that's why this book is so profound. Yeah. Just, there's so many things in it that just seem to play right in to what's going to really happen to us, what has happened. And that's not to mention Baron, Baron Trump himself. I mean, Baron Trump is a tall, uh, smart young man that seems to have uh, his head on straight. So we could be seeing something from him in the future as well. Who knows exactly what all this means. But that's the kind of stuff that you're seeing uh, back, uh, you know, going on in New York right now. So my question, my, even if, like, let's say, even if you believe Trump is going to help America, if you, you believe that, some of you don't believe that, some of you do believe that, I am like David, wait and see. We'll see what happens here in the near future. But my point is he's still not president right now. He will, uh, it'll be in January by the time he is inaugurated. Do you really think that the dark side will lay down and give up all of their control that they've had over the entire world for such a long time? I don't think they'll do it. I think that they're going to do everything in their power to make sure this doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that they're going to succeed, but I think they're going to do everything in their power. We have millions of enemies within. Um, the records show that millions of immigrants have come across our border. A lot of people that are in our border right now that hate America, including people in our government that hate America, um, our government itself is devaluing our own dollar. Uh, there's so many things going on that it would be hard pressed to see that we don't have major enemies within. And we're at the weakest time that I've ever seen in our country. And of course, I'm only 42 years old, but I've never seen people so weak, minds so weak. Uh, at, at universities such as Harvard, they had cry rooms or rooms where people could go if they feel distressed about the election. This is how weak our people have gotten. And yeah. look, we're talking about we're talking about some major things going on. And I haven't even mentioned a lot of the stuff that's going on, but there are people out there that are blowing the whistle on all of these people that are literally within our borders. Uh, David, you have anything to ask before I play this video of uh, Putin here? Well, I just want to say that I, you know, the left isn't going to lay down, and these people. Um, uh, and I, I'll say in all honesty, uh, I couldn't vote for Mr. Trump, but I'm really glad he's in instead of them. You know, I can honestly say that. Maybe that's um, convoluted. I don't know. But uh, I really am glad because obviously many of the things Mr. Trump is for are so much better than those loons. But I really do pray that he lives to take office. And I would be really surprised if there isn't another very serious attempt to kill Mr. Trump before he takes office. I think that's just a no-brainer. Yeah. So I really, really hope he is taking measures to protect himself. And, and I would say the same for you guys, too, because they are infiltrated within every line of government work and everything else along those lines. And right now, um, 
there's nothing holding them back. And so every bit of power that they can take right now, they're going to take it. So also Trump needs protection, but you guys, we need protection as well. We need to be thinking about this. Yeah. This is a video um, yeah. from, yeah. That now I didn't, I'm not, I don't have the whole video on here. I'm not going to play the whole video for you because it's a long video, but I do recommend going and checking out this video in its entirety because the stuff that, that Putin says We'll get the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. I promise you that. But this is what he said here uh, just recently. To a certain extent, the moment of, of truth is coming. The previous world order is irreversibly becoming a thing of the past. One could say has become a thing of the past. And the shaping of the new world order is become the scene of uncompromising fight. Uncompromising, first and foremost, for the reason that it's not even the battle for power or geopolitical influence. It's a clash of the very principles that would be the foundation between the relation, you know, for the relation of the countries at the next historical stage. And its outcome will define whether all of us jointly can build a world that would allow everyone to develop and to solve the outstanding contradictions based on mutual respect of cultures and civilization without coercion and use of force. So he goes on to talk about more stuff, but he talks about how the left on you know, the West are destroying the dollar on purpose. And so here's the way I look at it. That you see that they've formed a union there. There's like 11 countries, major countries in the world that have formed this union together. I believe they call it BRICS. 2024 and uh, Russia is no longer acting on the American dollar. All of these countries are banning together. Now there's a calm before the storm right now and realize this, that people like these people, like, like our enemies, uh, like some of the people that are in power right now in our own country, they've been great at gaslighting. They've been great at telling you and accusing you of the things that they themselves are doing. Oh, yeah. Interestingly, what we see from them is a peaceful transition, a peaceful transition. I wouldn't believe that for one <laughs> hot minute. I also wouldn't believe that Russia and China don't want a piece of the United States. Just because yeah. he said that this, and if you go on to watch the rest of it, um, I wouldn't be surprised if sometime between now and the, and the inauguration, maybe on the day of or even close to it, somewhere around there, you may see us being attacked by these people. They already have people within. They have a bigger, um, they have a bigger fleet than we do as far as naval fleet. Uh, through all war games, according to war, war, people within the Pentagon, war games have showed us losing to China every single time. So war, when it comes to war and when it comes to this stuff, people are right now rejoicing, thinking, oh, this is great. But this is what they want. They want us to be relaxed and not caring about what's going to happen because that's when things can happen. That's when things can strike. Yeah. And uh, I, I've done some reading into that, too, those war games. And every way you slice it, short of without using nuclear weapons, China kicks our tail in the Pacific in a naval conflict. You know, all this, we're the biggest military. And, you know, it's like now people don't believe Russia has nuclear weapons anymore. It's like we don't even believe that. But, you know, is it door number one where nuclear weapons anymore? It's like we don't even believe that. But, you know, is it door number one where Mr. Trump and Mr. Putin and Elon really oppose the new world order? Or are they the right head of the beast that's just fighting to be able to control it. There's never a time when the Israel of God should be more in prayer and watching and praying and being ready because what the Bible says is going to happen is going to happen. And we'll just have to see where everyone lines up here. My, my question is, why is, and I like the things Trump's saying recently, he's talked about, you know, all of the things he's going to do when he gets in, but he's no longer... Uh, running for office and what I find odd is that he would announce these things this early knowing that it's going to provoke the enemy to strike hard against what he's doing because they're not getting you know the things he's saying they're going to do are really threatening some very powerful oh, and elite yeah. people and then you have this you have this uh, post from Elon Musk over on X Novus Ordo Seclorum 
And that doesn't make me feel easy. You know, I, I do <laughs> no. believe that they are, I mean, Putin just said it, they're trying to form a new world order where everybody can work together. So this is more confirmation that this is what is trying to be done. Now, like I said, it's going to take some time to see exactly what kind of new world order we're talking about. But if it's the new world order that we've heard about in the Bible, if it's that new world order, then what does that even mean? What does that mean to us today? David, if it's the new world order that yeah. we find in the Bible, what does that mean for Christians? That is the reign of the beast. That's a, nothing less than that. It's the reign of the beast. That's exactly what that is. And, I mean, it's hard to, hard to say anything else. So here is what I would say to you guys that I think is really going to be important. Um, you're going to need to pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the places that you go. Pay attention to the people that you see. And don't be, act, don't be quick to act on emotion because a lot of people act on emotion. They, they get emotional about a subject, and boom, they're at it. You, like you saw in the January uh, 6th thing where I think it was January 6th, where people went inside the the uh, White House and they left the doors open on purpose. They did that so yeah. that people would get in trouble. They did this yeah. to kind of, and it was even organized by people that were not on the side that they thought they were on, right? So people yeah. were getting emotional and jumping into things. There might be things that pop off that where you feel like, man, this is it. This is when we have to go and we have to do this. But I would say pray, humble yourself, gather information, before you act on anything, you know, there you don't know exactly what's being set up. These people are cunning. These people are evil, and they'll do anything to yeah. keep themselves from being judged and thrown into prison and for losing their money flow, whatever the case may be. And so there's a big play for power happening, no doubt about it. Whether Trump is good or evil or somewhere in between, that will be something that we'll have to see. But what I say is there's a definitely... Of um, a power struggle happening. A lot of these release things that are being going to be released, I believe, are the hand of Trump. I believe that he has been at the heart of a lot of this stuff, so that he can get his get himself into office. I mean, he even had several judges that were willing this time to prosecute people for voter registration. They may have been some of the judges that were in some of these Diddy and Epstein tapes. I don't know, but there's a big play yeah. happening, nonetheless. We don't want to get caught in the middle of it being, um, you know, useful idiots and being stuck in the middle somewhere and, you know, risking our own lives for nothing. So uh, I would say pray and be humble because no matter who is in power, no matter what person that God puts behind the wheel, if his people humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, he will come and be there for us. So we need to pray and turn. Don't be prideful because your candidate won and think that oh man now we're saved that's not how it works it never works that way it doesn't matter what leaders in power god bends their heart the way that he wants it to be bent he yeah. bends and turns the ways and so we need to pray and we need to offer prayer up for our leaders but we also need to pray for our families and pray for all of those around us because spiritual warfare is high right now uh, people's emotions are high and some i believe and I'm not prophesying anything, but I believe crazy things are about to happen. I've, uh, you oh, know, I've yeah. seen seen these things, and I and I just see it happening again. Yeah, the um, the tensions are going to be begin to boil, and there's going to be plenty of people that are going to fuel the fire of those tensions. And I believe, and I've said for a long time, I don't believe there is a political solution for the problems of our nation. I believe there's a spiritual one. And one thing we don't want to overlook is that the Lord omnipotent reigneth, and he is going to use the Israel of God in this time to get the truth of the gospel and the truth of Jesus Christ out to people. The crazier things get, the more people are going to be opening to, open to hearing the message of Jesus. That's where we come in. Yeah. That's where the Israel of God, we need to be on our knees like never before, watching and praying be those watchmen on the wall that we can bring people to jesus in this time that's the real the real important thing for us to keep our eyes on so true I, you couldn't have said it better guys it's time to pound the like button um subscribe if you haven't already subscribe before you hit the like button but we're going to pound the like button together on the count of three you guys ready one two three, three. 
Boom. Boom. Boom, shakalaka. Thank you guys so much for liking this. Subscribe if you